This video is just going to go over the accounts receivable tracker that is a template available at the accountingexcel.com store. And I'll leave a link in the description to the template if you want to download it. Um, but I'm just going to go through it real quick. And it's also going to be an introduction to how to record and keep track of your accounts receivable using Microsoft Excel. So the template has a couple of different tabs here. It's got an invoice tab, so you can send out invoices to your clients or to your customers. It's got an AR aging summary so that you can determine how old your receivables are and who you need to follow up with. And then it's got a monthly billing summary just for analysis purposes so that you can go through and see what you're billing each month and the amounts. And then it's got a deposit reconciliation where we're going to enter in our bank deposits and then we're going to be able to reconcile that to our accounts receivable detail, which is going to have all of our invoices and our amounts that we've received from our customers. And we're going to post those here and reconcile those to the bank. And then there's a tab for customer information that we can enter in all of our customer information. Um, their names, their street address, their city, state, and zip, email, phone number, and then their billing terms. So just a quick background on the file. Everything's driven by the date on the accounts receivable aging. So if we want to show our aging as of 1231-2021, we'll have that date here. Or we can use, put any kind of month end that we want, and it's going to update all of our all of our receivables and the aging based on that date. So that date flows through to the remainder, the remaining tabs and calculates everything that's necessary. So to begin, I'm going to enter in a couple different customers just so we can walk through how this works. So once I have my customers entered, I can select the terms for each customer. So there's a couple different terms. There's due upon receipt, net 10, net 15, all the way down to net 60. So I'm just going to go ahead and select a couple of them here. So we'll do net 15, net 30, and net 45. So now once I have my customers entered, I can send them some invoices um, using my invoice tab, which I'll get to later. But when I send them an invoice, I want to track it on my AR detail tab. So to track my invoices. I just want to select the customer that I'm going to send my invoice to and we'll just put install and put a put a um, invoice date and you can see that it automatically populates my terms, populates my due date based on the invoice date and then I can enter the amount that I want to bill them. So we'll just put $250 and then you'll see that it calculates automatically the amount that's outstanding and the day is outstanding and the status of that invoice. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter a couple invoices in here so that we can see um, how to apply deposits. Okay, so now I got a couple different invoices in here for our three customers and I put in a project name for them, put in their invoice date. It automatically calculates the terms and the due dates and it shows the amounts outstanding. So now we can come over and look at our AR aging. And as of 12-31-2021, you can see what the aging looks like. Now if we were to change the date to, let's say, 9-30-2021, uh, it's going to calculate what bucket those those invoices go into by the customer name. So we'll leave it as 1231 for now. Okay, and then I, I have a, a deposit that I've created here that we're going to apply. So we have Gold Treasure paid 1303.75, Independence Center paid 800, and Small Oaks paid $250. So our total deposit is 2353.75. So whenever I go post this deposit, I'm going to keep track of that on my deposit reconciliation. So we're going to put in our deposit date, 9-15-2021. Uh, 
1.1. And the deposit for our bank statement is going to be the amount on the deposit slip or the amount that's in your that shows up on your bank statement. So 23.53.75. Okay, so now we have a difference here of 23.53.75, and that's because we need to apply our deposits in our accounts receivable detail. So we're gonna go in here and apply that deposit to the invoices. So here's small oaks that we had, small oaks, $250. So we'll apply that. So date paid, nine, 15 to 21, amount paid 250. And then independence, 9, 15, 21, they paid 800. And then our last one was gold treasure, 1303.75. That was on 9, 15, 21. So now if I go back to my deposit reconciliation, you can see that it's my de bank deposit matches my deposit for detail. And that's gonna update automatically since I have my payments posted. It's gonna update automatically my accounts receivable aging. So it's not gonna show those amounts that were due anymore in my, in my aging. So if we go back to the AR detail, say that there's a partial payment that's made. In this case, we got all of the payments on the invoice paid in full, but say that there was a partial payment, like there was a thousand dollars here, and then they paid another amount in on 10, 15, 2021, you could enter it into this area here and it'll automatically update everything. And then if they made two partial payments. You could put the final amount in the third, the, the, the last columns here, and that's automatically going to update everything. Now you can see everything's updated, everything outstanding, nothing outstanding. And uh, that's going to carry forward to our AR aging. So after I entered my invoices, it's going to show you what the amounts billed were for each month of the year. So it depends on the amount that's it's going to calculate this year. So whatever your AR aging is, it's going to update this amount for the year. And then it's going to show you the amounts that have been billed each month and then the total amount billed year to date in these columns. The last thing is the actual invoice. So say that we wanted to send out an invoice to one of our customers. Well, it's really easy to do on this invoice tab because all you need to do is select this customer that you want to send the invoice to, Independent Center. It's going to populate all of their information. And then all you need to do is enter the date. So say that we want to send out an invoice on 1015. And then it's going to populate the due date based on the terms for that customer. And then we can put an invoice number in there and then put in our detail. Say two hours at a rate of $100 an hour. It's going to automatically calculate our total. And if there's tax or anything like that that needs to be calculated, you can update the tax rate here. So say that we want to make it 6%. It's going to update your amount for the tax and then show them the total invoice. You can enter your company name up here, street address, all that information. It's going to update your, your banking details to let them know who to make check, checks payable to. And then you can enter your routing information here so that your customers can make payments. So that is an overview of how to keep track of your accounts receivable using Microsoft Excel and the accounts receivable tracker that's available at the Accounting Excel store. I'll leave a link in the description so that you can download it. And we'll see you all next time.